Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with coverage of round 5 of the 2017 Norway Chess Tournament. I have two games for you, I'll show you the game of Vladimir Kramnik who is in second place against the tournament leader Hikaru Nakamura, a Russia-USA clash. And I'll show you the end of the game of world champion Magnus Carlsen against Anish Giri. Let's get into it! Kramnik, White, Nakamura, Black, E4 from Kramnik, C5, the Sicilian defense, Knight F3, D6, Knight C3, Knight F6, D4, C takes D4, and here Kramnik takes with the Queen an unusual move. A6, E5, Knight C6, an in-between move, hitting the Queen, so Kramnik does not have time to take on f6. Queen went to a4. d takes e5. Knight takes e5. And black has a little bit of trouble with that knight on c6, which is pinned. But bishop d7 does the trick. Knight takes d7. Queen takes d7. And bishop d2. Kramnik said afterwards, a strange move order, but still a nice opening result. White has obtained the bishop pair and at the highest level two bishops is always a little advantage, a little something. g6 from Nakamura, Kramnik castled queenside, bishop g7, bishop g5 and Nakamura opted for an endgame. He played queen g4. There are different ways you can get into the endgame now. Kramnik chose to take on f6. Queen takes a4 is forced, knight takes a4, and bishop takes f6. Kramnik said he thought this endgame was good for white. He played c3 to stop the bishop coming to d4, which would be a good square and a good diagonal for the bishop. e6 and g3, a move that was predicted by Grandmaster Nigel Short in the broadcast. He says, he said, I know how Kramnik thinks he likes to put his bishop on g2 like he does in one of his favorite openings, the Catalan. So he's Catalaning the bishop here. Rook c8, bishop g2, indeed a nice diagonal for that bishop. Bishop e7, rook d2, Kramnik wants to double on the d file. And an interesting move from, from Nakamura h5. He's not castling, he's looking for counterplay along the h-file. That's why he keeps his rook on h8. Rook hd1. Afterwards Kramnik showed that he could have played h4 to stop black playing h4, but then black has rook c7, rook hd1 and then g5 and gets the counterplay on the king side after all. So the move played in the game was rook hd1, h4 as planned, knight b6 hitting the rook, rook c7, and now a little move repetition, knight a8, rook back to c8, knight b6, and rook c7. But Kramnik was not ready for a draw and he played f4. Nakamura took on g3, h takes g3, now he has the open file for his rook, and he played rook h5. Kramnik said that he thought this was a losing move during the game. Just to show some obvious mistakes that black can make, rook h2 looks, looks a very natural move, but is a big mistake because then there is the discovered attack on that rook with bishop takes c6 check. And if you take on c6, then you lose a rook on h2. Yes, black can take on b6, but white has won an exchange. Another little variation that came along in the broadcast is another natural move that black could play here, rook bishop c5. But again, that fails to bishop takes c6 check, rook takes c6, and then rook d8 check, and suddenly you win the rook on h8. 
King e7, rook takes h8, bishop takes b6, and again white has won an exchange. So you have to be careful, Nakamura played as said, rook h5 in the game. Knight a8 from Kramnik, rook c8, and rook d7, and Kramnik said that he thought this was winning. Nakamura played rook h2, good move. He of course, you could of course ask the question, what if black just takes on a8, takes that piece, a piece is a piece. But well, that's not very good because then white has rook takes b7. The knight on c6 is now unprotected and if you try, try to protect it with rook c8 then there is bishop takes c6 check, rook takes rook b8 check, bishop d8 only move, rook b takes d8, king e7, rook 1 d7 check, King f6, and this is a very good rook endgame for white. He's a pawn up and has a winning position. Let's look at another variation after rook takes e a8, rook takes that knight, rook takes b7. You can also try and protect the knight with rook c5, but then there is rook c7, and you will win that knight after all. If instead of those moves you play after rook takes b7, you play knight a5 to solve the problem with your knight. Then white has rook takes e7 check. And after king takes e7, you lose the rook in the corner. And again, white has a winning position. So taking on a8 is not very good for black. And that was what Nakamura had seen, so he played Rook h2, hitting the bishop. Kramnik played the bishop to e4. Afterwards he gave a nice variation after bishop f3. If then black harasses that bishop like in the game with rook f2, that is a bad move. He should, he should play bishop c5 here instead and then the game is equal. But after rook f2, we get a similar variation as in the game. Bishop takes c6, b takes c6, knight c7 check, king steps aside, rook h1, attacking over the h-file, bishop f6, rook h7, bishop g7, and then there is knight takes e6 check. And if you take that knight, there is rook takes g7 and White is winning. Nice variation. In the game Kramnik played bishop e4 and now rook e2 from Nakamura harassing the bishop and we get a similar variation. Bishop takes e6, b takes e6, knight c7 check, king f8, rook h1, bishop f6, Similar to the variation we just saw, but now Kramnik did not play rook h7 like in that previous variation, bishop g7, because there is no knight takes e6 check now, because the rook that was on f2 in the previous variation is now on e2 and can just take that knight. So instead of following this variation after bishop f6, Kramnik did not play rook h7, but took on a6. Rook a8, hitting the knight and looking at the a2 pawn. Knight b4, protecting that pawn. c5, kicking the knight away so that black can take on a2. Knight d3, rook takes a2. King b1, rook went back to a8. And knight takes e5. White wins a pawn. Rook b8 from Nakamura, hitting the b2 pawn. Rook b7, rook takes, knight takes, rook g2, rook h3, g5. Those pawns were swapped, f takes g5, bishop takes g5, knight c5, 
bishop back to e7. Yes, white has an extra pawn, but it's difficult to make progress. It's difficult to win this position. The pawn on g3 is weak, and in this position with the bishop is stronger than the knight. Knight d3, bishop d6, knight f4, rook f2, threatening to take bishop takes f4, and black will win his pawn back. Rook h4, king e7, rook g4, rook f1 check, black is not concerned that the white king will now come up the board. King c2, rook f2 check, king b3, rook d2, rook g8, and the rook came back to f2, again threatening to take on f4, and Kramnik saw nothing better than returning to g4 to protect the knight, to avoid losing a pawn, and rook d2, rook g8, rook f2, and we have a move repetition, and the game was drawn. Kramnik's first question after the game was if the computer had found anything decisive for white, and when the answer was that it was not the case, Kramnik said, okay, then I'm not so disappointed. Let's have a look at the end of the Carlsen Geary game. This is the position after 24 knight takes e4 from Carlsen. It's queen, rook, and two knights versus queen, rook, and two knights. Both players have six pawns. Material, material is equal, and the position is also more or less in the balance. Carlsen desperate to win his first game. In the first four rounds, he had three draws and a loss against Aronian. Geary is on 50% with a win, a loss, and two draws. Here, Geary played queen d5 and said afterwards that Carlsen had missed his move. Carlsen found nothing better than go back with his knight to d2. And Geary wins a pawn with c takes b5. e4 from Carlsen hitting the queen. Queen back to c6. And king h1 here from Carlsen. His plan is to play d5 and then he wants to make sure that queen c5 then is not check. And here Geary played rook c8 and said afterwards that he should have taken on d4 here. And he showed this variation. Knight takes d4 and then queen c5. Then Carlsen can win his pawn back. Knight takes b5. But this is a very nice position for black. White has weak pawns on c3 and e4. The knight on g6 and has an outpost on e5 where it can jump to d3. It can also go to f4, combined with the queen moving to g5 with pressure against the white king, pressure against a g2 pawn. Black's king is also safer than white's king. Black has protection of three pawns, white only of two pawns, as Geary pointed out. And in his words, he said, good position with no risk at all which is a rare occurrence when you play Magnus. And of course, even rarer when you play Magnus with black. Giri said that he did not think he was winning here, but he would have a better position and he could try to win the game. Giri had seen this variation, but he thought he could get a better version of this by playing rook c8, but he had underestimated Carlsen's reply d5, which was underestimated by him. He thought first that it wasn't possible because the pawn on c3 is hanging, but Carlsen had judged it correctly. Geary took on c3, Carlsen took on b5, queen back to c7, rook b1, f5, black is still a pawn up, but this game will peter out to a draw. I'll show you the remaining moves. Queen b4, Geary took. And then the very strong move d6, forking queen and knight. Knight d5 from Geary. The queens were swapped, d takes c7 and knight takes b4. Rook takes b4, e takes f3, 
Rook takes b7, everything goes off the board. f2, of course that pawn is not going anywhere. g3, king h7, king g2, knight e7, king takes pawn, knight d5, knight c4, and rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, and knight takes e5, and the game was drawn. There's nothing to be played for in this position. So after five rounds, the world champion is still waiting for his first win. He already had three white games. He played so well in the Blitz tournament before the main event. You can find a video on that in the playlist. He destroyed the field with 7.5 out of 9 in that event, but in the main event he cannot get going and he's still on minus 1. Anish Giri was quite happy with his draw with the black pieces against the world champion, but of course he was kicking himself that he missed that chance with e takes d4 to get a better position with the black pieces and he could have tried to win that. The results from round 5. All draws. Carlson Giri draw, Kranding Nakamura, Vashe Lagraf Aronian, Anand against So, and Kayakin against Kairana. All games ended in a draw. So not much changed in the standings. Everybody got half a point extra. So it's Nakamura still in the lead with plus two. Kramnik and Aronian with plus one. Four players on 50%. Carlsen and Vashe Lagraf on minus one. And Anand has three draws and two losses to his name. The sixth round will be played on Monday the 12th of June and I will be here after the round to tell you what happened. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel. I'm looking forward to your comments and if you liked the video, please share it on YouTube. You also may want to check out my Chess to Progress channel. The link is in the description box. Also in the description box is a link to the playlist of Norway Chess 2017 with all the videos that I've made so far. This is Rick from Chester Impress. Thank you very much for watching.